Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and today I want to talk to you all about cover stitching. Cover stitching is on my Bernina L890 that you see right behind me and on various other machines. And cover stitching is not quite like serging. It's more like top stitching with serger-like qualities. So you might've seen this on a t-shirt with either a double needle look or a triple needle look, and then it looks kind of sergy underneath. Well, these have a lot of versatile uses from decorative to functional. So let's go through and get on the computer and show you a few things and dive through the big book of serging so you can see how you would use your cover stitches on your next sewing project. All right, well, let's start with what is a cover stitch machine? You have combo versions and you have standalone versions. Now, not all overlocker sergers are cover stitch machines, just like not all cover stitching machines are overlockers because cover stitching is a special stitch usually used to hem knits, top stitch seams, and in some cases, embellish. The first one we're gonna talk about is the Bernina L890. Now this Bernina L890 is the coveted machine with the guided access, the air threading, the quietness. It is just the best thing that you will ever purchase when it comes to sergers. There's a mechanical equivalent that is a, a little bit more um, economy conscious, and that is the Burnett 68. Once again, it is a combination machine. It overlocks and it cover stitches. It has an equivalent of just a cover stitch only machine, and that is the Burnett 62, and it is also air threading. Now, there's also some entry-level sergers from Burnett. It's the Burnett 48, which is a combination machine. It's going to do overlocking, and it is going to do cover stitching. Then there is a cover stitch only version, which is the Burnett 42, which just does cover stitch. So what do these machines do? So there are several different types of stitches. There is a four-thread cover stitch, that's gonna be the one that yields you the three needles at the top and then a little overlock stitch at the bottom. This one, you know, is something that, you know, you're probably gonna use quite often. In contrast, there is a three thread cover stitch wide that is removing the center needle so that you actually present with a wider looking two like a double needle look and the cover stitching on the back but then there's also a three thread narrow and you can do that either towards the left side or you can do that towards the right side and then the chain stitch is thread through the needle only one needle and then the cover stitch looper threaded and it looks like a chain but why would you use a cover stitch well basically i mentioned hemming a t-shirt hemming a knit because cover stitching is the closest thing your overlocker can do to a traditional straight stitch on your sewing machine. So for instance, think of the chain stitch with that one needle as your straight stitch on your combo machines or your cover stitch machines. One of the benefits of doing cover stitching over regular sewing on your sewing machine is that your overlocker, serger, cover stitch machines have what is known as differential feed. And differential feed is from having two sets of feed dogs, one in the front and one in the back. And so how you set the ratio of how those feed dogs move is how it's gonna feed the fabric through the machine. For instance, the numbers range to set your differential feed from 0.4 to 2.1. And you know, that number might vary a little bit depending on if you're using a Bernina or a Burnett, but one is typically the neutral setting for the feed dog so that they move together in sync. Adjusting the differential stitch to a number above one will move the feed dogs in the front faster than the feed dogs in the back, and it will give you a gathering result. Adjusting the differential stitch to a number lower than one will move the back feed dogs faster and the front feed dogs slower, stretching it out. So that if you have something that's puckering up and you want it to be flat, you could stretch it out. 
or maybe you want something to have a lettuce edge or you just want to go for something decorative. Now, typically with cover stitching, we're using our differential feed to keep things flat, to tame knits. So here is a little diagram of cover stitch uses. So for our four thread cover stitch, this uses three needles and a looper thread in the purple path, or the purple path is our cover stitch path. It's the perfect weight for heavy knits and other woven fabrics, and it's an error-proof stitch for you cover stitch beginners because that center needle thread prevents tunneling, so it helps flatten out the stitch. So if you have the three thread wide stitch and you're using thinner fabric, it's going to tunnel up on you or make a pin tuck. Then there's the three thread cover stitch narrow, and you can do those either to the right or the left side, like I mentioned earlier. And this is a nice stitch for very delicate knits, for delicate fabric, for things that, you know, like thinner the fabric, the closer together you want those needles. So keep that in mind. And, um, but, you know, you can kind of mix these things up because sewing is awesome because you can make things look the way that you want them to look. So here's an example of the four thread cover stitch that I did on these leggings. And you can see, you know, nice and tidy, very cute, gives a nice professional finish on it. I just love it. Here's a shirt I made from a pattern by Lizelle and Company. And I think this is the Nord sweatshirt, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, this is was really fun to serge the seams together with the serger features of my machine. And you can see here, you can see those seams there. But it also required a little bit of cover stitching. Now, ah, I got some makeup on this when I tried it on. but So I used the cover stitching to hold down my seams here on this little decorative V. I also used it to top stitch my collar into position. And then I used it a little bit as a decoration here at the bottom because the hem of this is faced. So I actually sewed the facing on, turned it up and sewed from this side, which allowed me using my soft lock thread in my machine, that soft lock by Wonderfill and got that nice little top stitching on my shirt. And it came out really good great and I love the shirt but it's really warm so I only save it for the super cold days. Now a lot of you have been asking how do you tie off your cover stitching stitches? Well I think it's pretty easy. I just simply stop at the end of my work, lift my presser foot and use my little pulling device to pull a long loop, cut it on the side of my machine, then release the bottom piece and cut that and then those stitches are locked off and they're not gonna pull away. Now the chain stitch is similar to a straight stitch on a sewing machine, like I mentioned. You can use this for hemming, you can use this to assemble two pieces of fabric together, you can quilt with it, you can definitely use it for basting because if you don't lock off your stitches, that chain stitch will pull right out. Most of the time you don't want that to happen, but if you're basting, you want that to be easy. And then decoration. Then there are combo stitches. Now these are the stitches that require five threads and the combo stitches can only be done on combo machines. So there is an overlock element to the stitch as well as a straight stitch. So what you're looking at here in the sample on the right is a combo stitch. So we have used our three threads as an overlock stitch. So it's a three thread overlock. And then we have a two thread chain. And this is an awesome stitch if you are sewing together like pajama pants made of woven and you just wanna use your serger and you don't wanna to have to be relying on your sewing machine because that chain stitch gives you a tight, secure stitch. On your uh, regular overlock stitches, if you try to sew wovens together with an overlock stitch, you get these tiny little dots showing because the tension never gets totally tight. So it doesn't always give you a perfect seam, particularly like on tight things. And I don't really recommend on like fitted items that are woven, sewing your seams with a serger. Now I did not make these jeans, but I wanted to take this as an opportunity to show you that look, this inseam of these jeans is stitched together with a combo five thread 
three thread overlock and chain stitch stitch. Also the um, hem of the jeans was done with a chain stitch. You can also, uh, you see this stitch done on the denim as well, but it's just a quick way to do a seam. It can also be decorative and it can also be something where you use if you're sewing a woven to a knit together. So it's, you know, just experiment with it because it has a lot of fun options. So this is a project that we did from Inspiration Magazine, and this is a great example of a combination um, using my embroidery machine and my L890 serger. Because I have done my narrow three thread cover stitch here on the neckline, you can see that here, and then I used the combo stitch, and I mentioned that the combo stitch is sometimes good for sewing a knit to a woven. And you can see here, that's exactly what I did here. So this is cotton lawn and this is a light ribbing. And so you can see there's the bottom side of that chain. And that came out great. And then when I did that narrow three thread cover stitching on the bottom of this blouse, it worked quite well on the actual blouse part as well. And sometimes a lot of you have asked me like when you're doing a hem using the uh, cover stitching, you know, some of us are really good at guiding the fabric through the machine and others not so good. Well, one of the things that I like to use first of all is the stay tape. And this stay tape comes in a roll and you can get it in quarter inch, half inch, and all of that and I particularly like the double-sided kind. It's almost like stitch witchery but a little bit thinner and you press that onto your hem and you, then you peel the tape off then you fold your hem up and press and it keeps it nice and neat. Another thing too is that I use the guides on the plate of my cover stitch to line things up under the foot. Uh, this one in particular you know I just you know, happened to fold it up neat and tidy and was able to get it great. But if you are not using any of those products and you want to just roll over your hem, stitch it following those guides, you can also take applique scissors, like these little duckbill scissors and trim really close and get any excess that's creeping away from your piece with these. The sky is the limit when it comes to decorative stitches. I mean, do you see here, I have my fringe bag that I made, and this was just a total experiment. I call this the avocado bag, but in this case, I've used my um, decorative thread in my chain stitch to quilt my bag. I use the chain stitch to assemble the bag, and I use the cover stitching to hold on my fringe. Also in the background there, you see an example of cover stitch plaid. Uh, we have a video that we did where I made a little stocking and I did like faux, faux burberry or faux burberry plaid. That is a video if you're interested in that technique, definitely check that one out. But um, this is just really fun and you know a great project to play around with your serger. We also have a class coming up in the store where we're doing a uh, Tabitha tote from Suki Sews and that uses a little bit of the serger plaid element as well. And if you notice, you'll see a heavier thread that I've put in that cover stitch looper and that's why this does such a good job because this is just not something that you can easily re replicate on your sewing machine. When you're doing the decorative stitching, you can do three to four thread cover stitching. The, th the decorative thread goes through the looper path or the purple path or the cover stitch path. And um, you might have to loosen your tensions just a little bit, but if you have the Bernina L890, you know that it's so easy to change the tension and save the stitch for your specific thread. And you can do this with three thread cover stitching as well and the chain stitching. And I actually used the chain stitch to enhance a crazy quilt block for quilting. And we did this in our embroidered crazy quilt series. There's six videos with this, but the second video is using the serger to do the decorative stitching. So you might want to check that out. And of course, I'll have the links to those videos in this handout.
So as you do this, once you get your stitches down, you might just need some helpful accessories to enhance your serging experience. So there is a height compensation tool, and that's going to help you go over lumpy edges when you're doing your cover stitching, either with decorative stitches or if you're hemming like a pair of jeans or a really bulky knit, it will help keep your presser foot level. There are binder attachments that work on the Bernina and the Burnett cover stitch machines, and those are fantastic if you're doing a lot of garments and apparel, and instead of doing like ribbing at the neckline, you can bind off the collar or the, or the head opening of your item. Then we have an upper accessory holder and ribbon guide. That's great if you want to couch on some decorative pieces, decorative ribbons, things like that. And that is for use with the Bernina L890. Then we have the cover stitch thread puller. It comes with the L890, but you can certainly purchase this separately if you have a Burnett. And then we have the decorative spool holder. And I use the decorative spool holder for my eight weight pearl cotton balls that are not wound on an actual spool. They're wound for hand use. And I just found that this helps have that thread come off the ball in a more even feed so it doesn't affect my tension. I hope you found some value in this tutorial. It certainly is fun to show off all of the things that cover stitching machines can do. And if you want to see more videos like this one, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. Happy surging.